There are many reasons why men are practicing semen retention, but the ultimate purpose is a spiritual practice. And I think that's getting lost overall in the message. You know, um, guys are talking about all the benefits, as I have, uh, because it's cool to know all the benefits, the material benefits, how you could become more attractive, how you can use your uh, S3X energy and transmute it, as Napoleon Hill talked about, to accumulate riches. You can use this energy to actualize your purpose but what is its main practice? What is the essence of the practice? It's a spiritual practice. It's about transforming your lusty energy into a loving energy. And even if that seems a little bit woo-woo, what it's really about is cultivating essence, cultivating life force. I just finished reading the Tao Te Ching, and the Tao Te Ching specifically talks about self-cultivation or semen retention as one of the main practices to understanding the Tao. The Tao means the way, or ultimately their description of what they call in the Tao Te Ching, heaven and nature understanding God. Now, in the Tao Te Ching, they never use the word God. They use the word the Tao. In different spiritual scriptures from around the world, the same descriptions of the way, the Tao, God, Krishna, Christ, Allah, are all described as the source of everything. And that is the ultimate practice of semen retention. So in this video, I'm going to share with you why semen retention will actually supercharge your worship and why worship is ultimately the way to connect with God and why men who practice semen retention will just ignite their worship and their ability to make that divine connection. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Nikula Daz, and I help men master their S3X energy so you can become a powerhouse both in and outside the bedroom. Go to the links in the description below to take the free S3X transmutation guide. And ultimately, if you're ready to take the next step and learn these practices of self-cultivation, learn these practices of transmutation, and develop a deeper relationship with God, and make sure you book some time on my calendar. You neither are you going to connect with me or one of our success coaches that are going to help you learn about our training, answer your questions, and make sure it's a right fit for you. Every man unanimously who works with me is on the spiritual path and journey. It's something I've noticed about my entire book of clients, my entire book of students. As we continue to grow, more and more men are coming to our trainings. And I'm super honored and excited to facilitate this training, mainly because I know how important it is to have a spiritual connection because a spiritual connection is ultimately your purpose as a human being. Sometimes we get lost in this word purpose. This purpose seems so big and people think, what is my purpose in life? And you think, well, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's to be a coach. Maybe it's to be a speaker. Maybe it's to be an artist. Maybe it's to be a father. Maybe it's to be, a, you know, whatever, an architect. Whatever it is that you're doing in the world, it is really secondary to the ultimate purpose. And the ultimate purpose of human life is to become God-realized. Now, how can I say that? What what evidence would I have of that to back that up? And I think that's a legit question. How can you possibly say that? Because that's a strong proposition. Say, this is the human, this is what the purpose of your life is. So when we look at life as a whole, and we look at the human species specifically, there are some distinct features that we have. So all species of life are essentially doing the same things. We're eating, we're sleeping, we're reproducing, we're creating some kind of home and comfort. This is true for the ant, it's true for the bee, it's true for the plant, and it's true for the human being. The human being, though, specifically has an intellectual part of them that can start to understand higher philosophy. That's what makes us humans and what makes us unique. We also have something called choice. Animals don't have the same choices that we have. They can't decide to transform themselves or to shift their behavior on their own. We can retrain an animal, but that would be an outside force coming in and saying, hey, I'm going to retrain you to, you know, like someone would train a dog or a cat to do something. I think it's a lot easier. I've got two cats. I know it's, it's hard to retrain them, <laughs> but dog owners know that you can train your dog. 
And we can even train a child to a certain degree. But at the end of the day, there's at some point in time where if a human being evolves enough, they start to exercise their own free will and choice. Anybody who has kids knows this. I told him to do this and they did something else. You know, that's, uh, the, that's what people have. And that's the beauty about being human. Now, just because you have choice doesn't mean that you are free from the consequences or the karma or the results of that choice. So your choices um, are still governed by the laws of nature. Nobody escapes the laws of nature, but you can choose whether to obey those laws or or not. You can choose whether you're going to, you know, buy a, a specific type of car or another type of car. You have those types of choices and you have the choice of where you put your attention. So for example, you're choosing right now to watch this video, to listen to these words. You can choose to move away as well. You could be investing your attention into something else. And in this world today, there is so many choices that it's becoming more and more confusing. Using. Hence, people are seemingly more informed than ever before, but it kind of seems like they're a little bit less wise, meaning they don't know where, it, where is a good place to put their energy. So the point is, is as human being, you have choice. Animals, when it comes to reproduction, generally don't have any choice. I think only dolphins that I know of, and it, by the way, if you know of a different animal that has this, then leave it in the comments below. Um, and, and make sure you ask questions and jump into the conversation. Uh, I'm open to hearing all different forms of worship and ways of looking at this practice. We've had some great discussions in the comments, and they inspire new videos and content. So please, you know, leave comments, ask questions, jump into the conversation. But essentially, uh, animals, most animals, the only animal I know of other than the human species is dolphins that actually have S3X for pleasure. Um, every other animal uses S3X on purpose and nature has allotted them a mating season. So they don't really have a choice. Their instinct, stinks, uh, their instinct just drives them to reproduce at a certain time of the year and then go through a whole cycle. And depending on the animal or the species, um, there's some bugs that once they, e once they ejaculate, they die. That's their life force. Done. Gone. One shot. <laughs> you know, how much of us, imagine if you had one shot, like how much you would uh, contain that energy or cherish that energy. Now, as human beings, we're fortunate because we reproduce that energy and reproduce it, but uh, it, it does have a lifespan in a sense. Uh, in the Tao Te Ching, it talks about that as humans waste their life force, so their S3X energy, so specifically overindulgence in S3X, anger uh, and negative emotions deplete someone's life force as well as well as just excessive activity. So indulging in all kinds of things that you don't really need to be doing, how we diminish our life. And of course, the waste of ejaculation, the waste of our sexual energy, the waste of our S3X energy is the most depleting, especially for us as men. So we should be super conscious of the way that we're using it. We are literally preserving years of our life. And guys who are choosing to just, you know, go at it every day or they're buying into the mainstream narrative that that's somehow healthy for you, uh, they're unfortunately being led in a destructive way. They're being led to essentially castrate themselves, make themselves docile and reduce years on their life. When someone practices semen retention and they exercise the choice to retain, what ends up happening is you have to develop more self-mastery. You have to con be confronted with your own urges, your own desires of a lower nature. You have to be confronted with the animal part of you, the flesh. That's why, for example, in the, in the, um, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjuna asked Krishna, what leads men astray from knowing God? What leads men off the path of self-realization, the purpose of human life? Uh, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, it's lust only. 
So he, he he doesn't say anything else. He says it's lust only, and then he talks about when men overindulge in lust, what ends up happening, and there's a whole trigger effect of loss of memory, loss of intelligence, and ultimately uh, descending or uh, back into the animal form of consciousness, essentially becoming a slave to the flesh. And I'm using the word flesh because that's language used in the Bible, where it talks about being a slave of your flesh or taming the passions of the flesh, meaning as a human being, we are able to rise above the passions of the flesh. Now, it doesn't say at any point that it's wrong, it's bad. Both the Bible and Bhagavad Gita both emphasize that S3X is not bad in itself. It's the misuse of S3X, just like money or anything else. You know, it's the misuse of it. You know, a perfect example is uh, marijuana, right? I, I know I, I put a post out on my Facebook talking about marijuana is one of these things, and I struggle with marijuana for years, that diminish consciousness, that diminish life and potential. And I was amazed at how many people actually were trying to defend marijuana. No, it's got health benefits and you know it's good for you. And I'm like, well, hold on a sec. First of all, yes, can uh, cannabis or marijuana um, uh, uh, be used uh, to alleviate pain or in a context of health? Absolutely, it can. But if somebody is just smoking like the way I was smoking for pleasure, for fun to check out or to deal with some hurt and pain that I had, then ultimately there's nothing medical about that. So you have to be, so anything and everything can be used in a positive or negative way. It's ultimately the misuse of it that makes it detrimental. So the misuse of our S3X energy lowers our consciousness. It essentially enslaves us to the flesh. So again, how do I propose that the human form of life is designed for God realization? It's because we can know God in the human form of life, and we are the only species that has the choice to override the animal instinct. So if nature has allotted every other species certain tasks, certain um, uh, uh, duties, you know, the bee is going to pollinate, and uh, I know there's something called the dung beetle, and the dung beetle, when an animal poops there in Africa, the dung beetle comes and it rolls up the dung and it moves it off of the tracks, and that they have to do that because those tracks are actually used by the smaller rodents, and then those same tracks are used by the snakes chasing the smaller rodents, so you can start to see they're all an ecosystem. They're all interrelated and every single one of them has to do their duty for the whole thing to work. And the animals don't have a choice. They're strictly driven to do their duty. But then you get the human form of life and the human form of life doesn't necessarily have to do their duty. You have a choice. You can get up in the morning and roll your dung. <laughs> don't do that. What I mean by that is you can get up and do your work. Whatever your gifts and talents are, whatever energies you've been given, you can get up and you can choose to put that into work and put that into effect in the world. And because of that, you get rewarded through good health and prosperity and opportunities and advancement in your career and recognition. All the things that we outwardly want is all a result of doing your duty but you can choose not to. You can get up and you can choose to wank one off and play video games all day and smoke a joint and watch Netflix and you can choose to just do nonsense with your time and then what ends up happening that? Well, look at people who do that. Ill health, negative relationships, addictions, and nature then rewards them with what they deserve, meaning we're all getting what we deserve. We all get what we put out as within so without. So you have choice. The question is, is, how do you make the choices? What do you rely on to make good choices? And this is again where God comes into play because God is within you. Once you discover God within you, consciousness and God are one. Jesus said, I and my father are one. Jesus lived a sinless life. What does that mean? It means that he always followed his consciousness. That's all it means. That's all it means. It means he was sinless because he was so in tune with that little voice that says, don't do that. Don't go there. Go here. 
do this, do that, that thing that we tend to override because of the passion of the flesh or the false ego. Oh, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to make money. I'm going to steal. I'm going to lie. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to be deceptive in the in the business deals I make just to get ahead, and then we justify it. Well, that's the way the world works. No, it's the way you work, and you will suffer the consequences of that. The world is a reflection of you, meaning me and you are choosing the type of world we live in by the daily actions that we take. So Jesus lived a sinless life simply means that Jesus, as a man, was able to conquer his flesh. He was able to rise above it, and he was able to connect with God, who he described as his father. And that fatherly voice that you hear in your head is going, Don't do this or do that. It's always talking to you. It's always there. But how in tune are you with it? Most of us aren't. And most of us aren't for many, many reasons. We can go, like that could be like a whole other video. But the point is, is that if we're honest, we have to realize, I'm not really in tune with that voice. Or I hear it, but I've overridden it, if that's a word. I've, I've overridden it so often that I can no longer hear it. I'm no longer sensitive to my own consciousness. So we have to link back with God. And the word yoga means to link or union. And that's why we worship. We worship God because God is consciousness. God is all pervading. He's spiritual. And the more that you worship him, the more you can hear him through your own consciousness, through your own heart. Hence, Jesus said, first seek the kingdom, first seek God, first seek consciousness, and then all things shall be granted to you, and the kingdom is within you. So start to worship God as you are. Some people don't want to worship God because they feel shame. I know Uh, I've gone through that. Like when I'm doing things that I know I'm not supposed to be doing and I'm overriding my consciousness, I tend not to talk about God as much. I tend not to want to worship. I don't want to go to temple or church. I don't want to wear anything that represents God because I'm like, "Uh, nah, that's not really, I try to override it. That's our rebellious nature. Philosophically, it's why we took birth in the flesh. We tried to disconnect ourselves from consciousness, and so therefore we took a material body, or we, in the Bible it says, we fell from grace. We left the garden. We, we, we descended from our highest consciousness, which is God consciousness, into animal consciousness or material consciousness, and now we're ruled by our flesh. And when we're ruled by our flesh, as much of the world is today, we can get into really dark places, really nasty stuff, addictions and mental health is on the rise and disease and obesity. That's all a sign that we are disconnected from our heavenly father consciousness. We can't even hear God within us anymore. So even for those who want to search for God, they begin to search out here and and then they fall for all kinds of different type of philosophies instead of going within themselves and cleaning themselves up. So how do you get back in line with God and why does semen retention supercharge your worship? So first of all, Jesus said, come as you are, meaning we're all coming to God as sinners or as people who have lost touch with him who have lost touch with our own consciousness. That's why he said, just come as you are. You don't go to the doctor when you're healthy. You go to the doctor when you're sick. You don't go say to the doctor, "Ah, I'm not going to go today until I get better. (laughs) You know, first I'm going to get better, then I'm going to go to the doctor. Well, when you get better, there's no need to go to the doctor because you're healthy. So similarly, you don't wait until you've cleaned up your act to ask for help. You don't wait until you're sinless to go to church or temple or mosque or, or, or discover someone who can help you to reconnect with God. You come as you are. And God is so loving that he accepts you as you are because he knows already 
you done fucked up. <laughs> and people who represent God are so loving that they accept you because they know you done fucked up and because they accept, like all the saints of all traditions, there's not one saint that I've read about who's like, I lived this beautiful, perfect life and then became a, and then was known as a saint. No, they're all like like Saint Thomas Aquinas. That was the high school I went to. He was a writer of of uh, of a Christian uh, philosophy, Christian philosophy. Um, he was a drunk, you know. So he was into the booze. Um, I'm pretty sure he was a womanizer. I know a few of the saints were big into uh, you know just like you know sleeping around and and all the things that the world offers. Most saints are like that, and then they reform their way because they discover God. They go within themselves and they go, hey, I don't want to live like this anymore. This is causing me way too much pain, and I want to live for something more pure, something bigger, something greater than me. And then they're able to do it because once they discover God within themselves, they discover so much joy, so much happiness. They discover that they're renewed in their spirit and their health and their vibrancy and abundance comes around, and they get so much joy from just serving people that they fall in love with God. Because they fall in love with consciousness. They're like, this consciousness is the way. It, it, it just leads me into the right ways. And it leads me to my path and destiny. And they walk fearlessly in that path. And they're faced with all kinds of opposition because this world, as Jesus said, this world does not love me because I am not of this world. If I was of this world, this world would love me. Because this world is the material world or a hellish world. This world, look at the people. Look at how people are acting. Look at the wars and the famine and the poverty. You don't think we have the resources to solve poverty? If we've got the resources to send billions of dollars to war, to go to war, it would take not even half of those resources to feed the planet, but we don't choose to do that. That is not a world ruled by God. That's why in the Bible it says this world is ruled by the prince of darkness. Your job is to get out of this world. Your job is to conquer this world. In the Tao Te Ching, it says be in the world but not of the world. Jesus said the exact same thing. I am in this world but not of this world. So as you grow closer and closer to God, you will look different than this world. You will think different, act different. You will go to different places. You will choose to do different things. And that's why it's a tougher path because you may question it along the way. I know I have. I'm like, but nobody else is doing this. Here I am trying to you know, correct myself and straighten myself out and nobody else is doing it. In fact, nobody values it. There's no recognition for it. In fact, some people even try to throw you astray. Ah, why are you doing that? They try to convince you using their intelligence, their intelligence or intellect to be like, no, you know, that's foolish. But I'm 100% convinced by my own experience that God is the way. Now, when you practice semen retention, the process of semen retention supercharges you. It cleans up your body. And that's the first way that you got to connect with God because God is within you. It's like it's the temple and the spirit is flowing through you. So if your conduit for the spirit, which is your body, is full of nasty food and drugs and alcohol and, and, and filled with nasty vibrations and 